Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. In today's video, I'm going to be playing with the new large die of the month from Spellbinders. I hope you'll stick around, see how I'm going to create my own cardstock, and see the finished card. Starting this month, Spellbinders is sending me a few kits each month to play with and share creations here on my YouTube channel with you. I have already shared a look at this Wednesday inspired card that you see up on screen now that uses the new stitching die of the month. And I shared a set of four cards that use their new quick and easy card kit of the month along with the January 2023 sheet load of cards. I will have both of those videos linked in the description box below if you're interested in checking them out. Today I'm super excited to be using the large die of the month, which the January 2023 is called Club Blooms. I'm going to be creating my own colored cardstock with some ink smooshing to die cut the flowers, the stems, and the leaves. And then we're going to put it all together at the end of the video on a card. I will have a link to all of the new club kits, the Spellbinders main store, and all of their socials so you can get more information about the products and get some more inspiration. As I start the process, I will let you know about other products and tools I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For my die cutting cardstock, I did need something that could take a little bit of water, so I pre cut some scraps of Strathmore Bristol Smooth to about five and a half inch squares. I cut six, one for each of the colors I'm going to use, and to get started, I'll be starting out with the reds and the pinks. I did make my own palette here, it's just a piece of white cardstock that I laminated, and I'm going to smoosh down some of the ink onto my palette, and then I just spray the water. Water until the ink moves pretty freely on that piece of laminated cardstock. Then I smush the cardstock right into that and I just keep going until it's pretty much all covered. Now between layers I do like to dry it just kind of like with water coloring how you get different variations of darkness. Once I liked the way it looked, I set it to the side so it could dry more, and then I went to clean off my palette. Now sometimes this cleans off beautifully, but the red did stain it a little bit, and I'll probably have to use a harsher cleaner later. But for now, this palette has two sides, so I moved on to one of the pinks. I did the same thing with the smooshing, spraying the water, and then getting my cardstock all covered. And again, I would bring in my heat tool every once in a while to dry that off. After I had all of the pink pieces done, I brought in my three green inks and I did the same thing with the other three pieces of cardstock. Let me know in the comments below if you have ever tried ink smooshing. After I had all six pieces filled up with ink, I did set those to the side for a few hours to dry completely. And then it was time to bring in the finished pieces, which I just love the variation on these. It just makes for some fun texture on your die cuts. Now off camera, I used the Club Blooms flowers and die cut some from each of the papers. For my flowers, I did the reds and pinks, and for the stems and the leaves, I did different greens. Here's a look at all of the pieces I did cut out and you'll see here from my leftovers I'm going to be able to make lots of pretty flowers. Some of the die cut pieces needed to be layered together so that's what I worked on next. I placed a dot of glue on each of the tips of this plant. I have no idea what it is. I am not a flower person but I do love the look of it. Some of the other flowers needed stems, which you'll see me add here, and some of the flowers needed centers. I am glad that I chose to use liquid glue because it did give me a little bit of wiggle room. I set these to the side for about 15 minutes to dry. 
I wanted to slow things down here for just a second and let you know that off screen, I've already decided what I wanted my card to look like. After my flowers had dried, I played around with the arrangement on an A2 card base, thinking I was going to use all the flowers on one card. But I wasn't liking how those looked on a single card. So I came up with kind of a corner floral cluster idea and I decided I would turn these into mini slimline cards. So sometimes it isn't always easy to finish a card on camera. I did need some off camera time to do this, but I am going to show you how I put this card together and now we'll have two cards from those die cuts that we made earlier. For my card base and card front, I brought in a single piece of heavyweight white cardstock. I cut a piece that was six and a half by six and a quarter, which will be my card base later. And then from the piece that was left over at the end, I cut that to six inches wide by three inches tall. Next, I'm going to do a little scoring. The first is going to be to score my card base in half. Now, I have to make sure when I do this that the edge against the ruler does stop at six and a half, and then I make a score line at three and a quarter. Now, for the piece that's going to go on top, because it's white on white, I wanted to add some extra texture. So, I went in and starting from what will be the bottom of the card front, I scored every quarter inch. After I had three score lines, I did skip, I think, five or six little notches there on the score, buddy, because that's where my sentiment will go later. Now, once that one was done, I continued with that every quarter inch until I got to the top. And you'll see here that my fingers got in the way on the left, so I just rotated my cardstock around to finish that scoring. I just like the added texture this gives to the card front. For my sentiment, I chose Happy Mother's Day from Spellbinder's We All Dance Sentiment Stamp Set. I will be using one of the green inks that I used to make my cardstock earlier. And when you do emboss lines like this, you could stamp so the lines are embossed or debossed. I did choose to have them debossed, so I have little valleys across my cardstock. I tried to get my sentiment centered top to bottom in that open area that didn't have any scoring and I put it pretty far to the right because I wanted lots of room on the left for my floral cluster. When it was in place, I inked it up and stamped it and it turned out beautifully. All the pieces are ready, so now it's time to get our card put together. The scored piece goes flat down onto the card front and then I'm going to add my flowers trying to match about the same cluster that I created earlier. Some flowers get put down with glue just flat to the card front and others like that main one there on the bottom left I will pop up with some foam tape. The first thing I did was arrange my flowers where I wanted them to go and then I started adhering them flower by flower. I didn't really worry about gluing down the skinny stems, instead I tried to focus on the bigger areas of the flower because I knew later the stems would be held in place with that main flower. Once I had all of the flowers that I wanted just flat on the card base adhered, I brought in two of my big blue rolls of foam tape. I have the three quarter inch and the quarter inch. If you've been around my channel long, you know I love this. I love the price. I love how easy it is to pull the release paper. Now, if you're interested in some new foam tape, make sure to check out my description box for links. Once I had the tape on the back of the flower, I pulled the release paper and finished off the cluster. Now I did make sure that all of my flowers went off the edges of the scored piece just a little bit to add some more interest and motion on the card. I finished the cards off by adding some white gems just kind of scattered on the front and then on the inside to add some decoration and since I had one small flower left, I cut it in half and split it between the two cards. You will see a close-up of that here in just a little bit, but for now, here are some close-up looks at the finished cards.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these two mini slimline cards using the new January 2023 Large Die of the Month from Spellbinders. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.